Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud Platform, two of the most widely used cloud platforms around today. And both of these platforms offer frameworks that make consuming their cloud services in your application a lot easier. On AWS, that framework is called Amplify, and on Google, it's called Firebase. In this video, I'm gonna compare these two in the following categories. We're gonna compare their features, and then DevEx, that's the developer experience of using each library, then documentation support, and that also includes community support, then pricing, learning curve, and lastly, we'll assess the future outlook of these two frameworks. What does their product roadmap look like, and where do we think they'll be in a few years' time? Now, a quick disclaimer before we start. If you are choosing between Amplify and Firebase, you're really choosing between AWS and Google Google Cloud. And there's a bunch of other considerations you should be aware of when comparing these two cloud platforms in general. But for this video, we are focused on how these cloud platforms can integrate into your application using their corresponding frameworks. Firstly though, let's have a quick look at how you use them both in a JavaScript web application. So both of these have a CLI tool that you can install locally in Node.js and that guides you through the setup in your application. For Amplify, you go to this page here, Amplify Dev Center, and you go set up Amplify CLI. And you can see here we've got instructions of how to install it globally as an NPM package. So we'd run that in the console, and then we'd go through these setups here to run Amplify Configure. And what that will do is if I scroll down this page a bit, that will let you log into your AWS account and get some credentials and set up a user that you can use with Amplify from the CLI that talks to your AWS cloud account. Once you've got this set up, you can then scroll to the bottom here and run this command, amplify init, and that will create a new Amplify application in your current directory. And that's how you use it in a JavaScript project. Once you've got that set up, there's a bunch of commands that you can run. And you can do things like amplify add auth, and that will add authentication into your project. Amplify add analytics, that will add analytics in your application to that. So you build up the features in Amplify by running these Amplify commands, and that all adds in extra pieces of JavaScript and extra snippets into your application. Firebase, on the other hand, has something fairly similar. The Firebase CLI is here, and just like with Amplify, you install that as a global NPM package with npm install-g Firebase tools, and then you do the similar sort of thing where you connect to your Google account, and it's got, again, a bunch of commands that you can run. So you can use things like Amplify, uh, sorry, Firebase init, and then you've got Firebase uh, apps create, which creates a new Firebase app in your current project. All right, so as you can see, Amplify and Firebase are both relatively simple to get up and running using the command line interface. So let's start by comparing these two with their features. Amplify and Firebase both include authentication. So they allow you to set up secure user authentication with various identity providers so that your users can log into your front end application and either Amplify or Firebase will handle the auth flow and they'll handle passing tokens to the various backend calls for you once your users are authenticated. In Amplify, this is done with a service in AWS called Cognito, which you can manage in the AWS console. And in Firebase, this is called Firebase Authentication. Also, both these two frameworks include analytics out the box. So Amplify and Firebase both have tools for app analytics, including user behavior, engagement metrics, and crash reporting. But there are some features that are exclusive to one or the other. So that's how I have to decide the winner in this category. AWS Amplify has a couple of things that Firebase doesn't have. Notably, GraphQL API support. GraphQL is a query language that lets you build flexible data queries when calling an API. The idea is that your front end decides what data it needs and the back end just returns the requested fields. So Amplify's API functionality lets you set up a GraphQL API that you can consume in your app. And that's pretty cool if indeed you are a fan of GraphQL. Now I know not everyone is, but there you go. That's not possible in Firebase out of the box. So that's a feature that AWS has that Firebox doesn't have. Also, one more feature that might be significant in the coming years is AR and VR support. Amplify lets you build applications that integrate with Amazon Sumerium, which is a service from AWS for creating immersive augmented reality and 3D applications. That integration enables you to securely embed Amazon Sumerian scenes into your web applications, which is a little bit niche, but it could be a game changer depending on what happens in that space in the near future. On the other side of the fence, however, there are some features that are exclusive to Firebase, and the big one is Firebase Real-Time Database. This is the big selling point of Firebase for a lot of people, to be honest. Real-time databases are databases that you can integrate into your web application, and you make updates on the front end, and then the framework will automatically propagate those updates to the server and to all other connected clients that might be looking at that data. 
That makes real-time databases perfect for applications that require collaboration. So consider an app like Trello, for example. If you were to move a card on a shared Trello board on one machine, that data is then saved to a real-time database and then very quickly, all other connected people who are logged on and looking at that Trello board will see that update happen before their eyes. And you haven't had to write any back-end code for that. And there really is no direct comparison for that feature on AWS Amplify. There are open source implementations of real-time databases. Superbase is a popular one, and it is of course popular to implement that on AWS, but it's not directly supported inside the AWS Amplify framework of tools. So you do have to use third-party packages and frameworks and things to get that working, or you need to roll something yourself. So when it comes to picking a winner for this category, I've got to say that that inclusion of real-time databases, for me at least, means I do have to hand this to Firebase for this category. It's such a huge time saver to not have to build APIs and things just to store some data in your application. You just install Firebase and then bam, you've got a database for your web app. So let's call that one nil and look at our next category, which is DevX. A good developer experience these days usually evolves around three things. It should be simple to install, simple to integrate into your workflow, and then simple to maintain. Both Amplify and Firebase do aim to simplify backend development. They both offer a ton of features, as we've just seen, and they're both actively maintained by AWS and Google, respectively, with regular updates being released to both. However, at a push, Firebase is seen as the more straightforward to learn. That's mainly due to Firebase focusing on being what they call a backend as a service. So the idea is that by using Firebase, you don't have to think about the backend at all. Everything is managed for you in a super simple and accessible way with much smaller scope compared to AWS. AWS Amplify's integration with the broader AWS ecosystem is less about abstracting away the backend, and it's more about allowing you to easily use AWS services in your application. So even if you do ultimately have to do some of the management and the setup of those AWS services yourself, AWS does therefore offer a bit more flexibility, even if that does come with a steeper learning curve and slightly more convoluted developer experience. So I'm gonna give this one to Firebase as well, just because as a framework, it does feel a lot more focused and targeted at one particular type of implementation. Next up, this is the Firebase documentation and this is the Amplify documentation. So we're gonna compare these two on documentation and community support. I'll pop links to these two pages in the description, of course, but yeah, they're both fine. As we saw at the start, the, the documentation for getting the CLI set up is very comprehensive. Both Firebase and AWS Amplify have robust ecosystems with detailed documentation and active communities around them. They both have thousands of questions tagged on Stack Overflow, and they've both been around long enough to find multiple excellent examples of open source projects that people have built with each and the other. It's tough to judge this one, but ultimately, I think I'm gonna make a call based on the most prestigious metric in the entire world, and that's GitHub stars. With 9.4 thousand GitHub stars on Amplify, and only 4.7 on Firebase, only, uh, this time, ultimately, I'm gonna to have to give this to AWS Amplify. So that makes a score two to one. All right, pricing, let's move on to pricing. So first up, both these frameworks are free and open source. But when we talk about pricing, we're really talking about the cost of the services that these cloud platforms provide and what those costs are gonna end up looking like if you use these two frameworks in your application. Firebase operates on a freemium model and it offers a generous free tier under their Spark plan. And that's quite sufficient for building development and smaller projects. That Spark plan includes essential services such as analytics, authentication, and database usage within certain limits. When your project grows, you can switch to what they call their Blaze plan, which is a pay-as-you-go option that bills you for the resources that you use beyond that free tier allowance. Firebase's pricing is straightforward with specific costs and additional storage and database reads and writes, function invocations, and all that sort of stuff. That makes it really easy to predict monthly expenses based on your application's usage patterns. AWS Amplify similarly offers a free tier and it offers a pay-as-you-go pricing model just like Firebase. The free tier on AWS includes a specific amount of build and deploy time as well, but also storage on S3 and other resources that could be enough to get small projects off the ground. Beyond the free allowances, you pay for what you use, with charges based on the underlying AWS services that your application consumes, such as S3 for storage or Lambda for compute. This means that the cost could vary wildly depending on the complexity of your backend and how many AWS services that you integrate with. 
So while AWS's broader service ecosystem offers incredible flexibility and power, it also introduces quite a bit more complexity when it comes to cost management. So it requires you to have quite a good grasp of which services you're using and how you're using them. So when you're weighing up these options, consider your project scale, consider the expected growth of your usage and specific backend needs you might have. If you're looking for simplicity and predictability in costs, especially in the very early stages of your project, then Firebase might be the way to go. Firebase's free tier is robust for starters, and then the shift to pay as you go is pretty seamless as your needs expand. On the other hand, if your project is expected to scale quickly or requires lots of use of those various AWS services that we talked about, then Amplify could offer more value in the long run. That's despite a potential steeper learning curve in managing costs. Personally, I build a lot of small, quick projects as a way to just test out a new framework and to teach people about things, and they don't get many users. And for me, to be honest, both of these are perfectly fine. And at small scales, both of them will cost essentially zero. So I'm gonna call this one a tie. But if you do, of course, need to measure pricing against the specific usage patterns of the application that you're planning to build. Now let's look at the learning curve in a bit more depth. The learning curve of these platforms is a vital factor to consider, especially as it significantly impacts the speed and the ease of which you can bring your project to life. If you want to ship something in two weeks, then it's not great if you have to spend that first week just getting your head around the framework. So for sheer speed and how quickly you can learn something will directly influence how long your project takes to reach completion. If you're leaning towards Firebase, then you're in for a relatively smooth ride. Firebase is designed with simplicity in mind. It aims to be accessible entry point for developers into the world of backend services. It really is that backend as a service as they tout it to be. It has a certain amount of independence from the broader Google Cloud platform, which means you won't be overwhelmed with unnecessary complexity if you're not using all those additional services. For many people, the appeal of Firebase lies in its straightforward approach to app development. Firebase offers extremely concise and clear documentation, and it has that user-friendly console as well. That doesn't mean it lacks depth, but rather it allows you to dive into more complex functionalities at your own pace, and that makes it a great choice if you want to hit the ground running without a steep learning curve. On the flip side though, AWS Amplify presents a different set of challenges. AWS Amplify is part of the whole AWS ecosystem, which is both a strength and a hurdle. The strength lies in the extensive range of services and the flexibility that that offers, and the hurdle is that there's a lot more there to master. Amplify integrates deeply with other AWS services, and that makes it really, really good for building complex and scalable applications. However, that integration does mean that you'll likely face a steeper learning curve, especially if you're new to AWS. The good news is that Amplify is designed to streamline development process to an extent, and it offers a suite of tools and services that support backend development, from data storage to authentication to machine learning and API creation, including GraphQL, as we talked about earlier. But to leverage the full use of those capabilities, you do need to invest a bit more time and understanding into both Amplify and also just AWS in general. So ultimately, I have to give this one to Firebase. By basically every measure, Firebase has more approachable learning curve from a standing start, and you will probably be able to get up and running with Firebase more quickly than with AWS Amplify. So that's one more point to Firebase right there. Right, lastly, let's compare these based on what we think the future outlook is for them. On the one hand, we've got Firebase. Firebase integrates well with Google Cloud Services. That makes it a solid choice for people that want a straight approach to application development. However, it is worth noting that Google has a bit of a reputation for discontinuing services that are relied on by thousands of users. Check out all these things on this page that Google has killed off over the years. Google are a company that are not afraid to move away from something the minute it stops fitting in with their long-term vision of the future. And while that history doesn't directly impact Firebase, it is something that can't really be ignored. AWS Amplify, on the other hand, is backed by Amazon's vast cloud infrastructure. It's the most adopted cloud platform in the world, and it likely will stay that way for a few years to come. So although it has a steeper learning curve compared to Firebase, the investment in learning how to use Amplify can pay off for projects that need those features. AWS adds new services all of the time, and I think there are well over 200 services by now that do all sorts of things, from image recognition with machine learning to IoT integrations, you know, Internet of Things and stuff like that. And over time, it's likely that more and more cool stuff will be available in AWS, and then you can call it from their Amplify package. So I think for that reason, the future is probably brighter for AWS Amplify, and I'm going to give this point to them. 
So there's the final scores. It's not scientific, but it can tell us a little bit about these two platforms. The conclusion to this kind of reminds me of the iPhone versus Android debate. If you want a simple, beautiful, easy to learn, easy to use application, then go with Firebase, that's your iPhone basically. But if you're willing to tinker a bit more and explore all the options, then AWS undoubtedly has a much wider ecosystem of features and options that you can use. There is so much right now that you can do on AWS that's just not possible on the Google Cloud platform. And that's not looking like to change anytime soon. So if you want that power and the breadth of services and you're willing to jump through a few more hoops with the libraries, then AWS Amplify is a super solid application framework that you can get up and running with very little prior experience. If you want my honest opinion, I think Firebase is the better designed framework and the inclusion of the real-time database is absolutely game-changing. However, I can live without that and I much prefer AWS as a cloud platform in general because of all the diverse services that they've built. So my own personal verdict on this is to go with AWS Amplify, but hey, you make up your own minds and why not let me know in the comment section below which of these two you prefer. While you're here, also subscribe to Trains Code on YouTube. I hope you found this video useful. Do check out my other videos. My name is James Charlesworth and I'll see you in the next one.